All right, hallelujah. Everybody, let's go ahead and stand up. Let's praise God together. Amen. Hallelujah. How does it feel to be in our own building finally? This oh, I'm so man. excited about this. I can't tell you. I, I came in here and I laid down on the chairs when we got here the other day, and I was like, I haven't done this in forever. You know, being a preacher's kid, you grow up, that's your nap place is the pews and stuff. <laughs> and so I hadn't done that in forever, and I was like, oh, my God, this feels awesome. So I'm so excited. Hallelujah. Amen.
Amen. That has to be your attitude. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. God is good.
Somebody say glory. glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say God is, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Well, turn around and say somebody. Let's look at somebody and say glory. glory. Then you can be seated. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Hallelujah. I about cried six or seven times since Friday. We tried, we, the, fam, the fam came on Friday and we, um, we had a dinner here and, and back in one of the rooms and, and I just prayed over the meal and lost, I mean, lost it. Just, just trying to pray over food. <laughs> God is faithful. Amen. And for the first time in our ministry, we have our own place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We, you know, we were assistant pastors in Greenville for five or six years, and then we came to Greensboro, and we have rented or, uh, or leased uh, ever since then until COVID hit, and then we had nothing. And um, a pastor, Pavlock, over in High Point let us use his church on Sunday afternoons. And uh, for the past six years, January 10th, six years ago, we had to move out of the business park. They, they didn't want to renew our lease. And um, I'm glad they didn't, because that was part of this journey. Hallelujah. And uh, six years we were breaking up and setting down. Breaking up, or break, setting up and breaking down. <laughs> we are not Neil Sadak and breaking up is not hard to do. All right. Hallelujah. We've been setting up and breaking down for six years. Not having, we were not, um, Doug Jones, my, uh, my director at uh, Rama. In Tulsa, said, when can y'all move in? I said, we've been nomads for six years. We have nothing to do but move in. <laughs> We're having church Sunday. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, um, welcome. Now, this is going to be the last time I say this. You'll understand later. To Faith and Victory Church. Hallelujah. Because there's some things coming. Hallelujah. Amen. That was, we're announcing today. And you've already figured something else up, but hallelujah. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, we are elated and excited to walk. Now, listen, as excited as we are and as thrilled as we are, this is the beginning of the next phase. Amen. Hallelujah. This isn't the end. This isn't the sum. This isn't the total. We haven't like, okay, we got there. Nope. We're here. Let's go. All right. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Um, come on up, sweetie. My darling wife. We got, well, we are, we can, yeah, well, my darling wife of 40 years. Hallelujah. Amen. 40 and a half now, um, or actually 40 and more than a half. All right. We were married in 1981, June, July of 1981. Uh, we have been in the ministry. We, I graduated from Rama in 1981, was ordained in 1981. Been in the ministry this May 41 years and uh, seen a lot, been a lot, done a lot, served God, seen God do all kinds of wonderful stuff. And now we are on the precipice of the next things that God has for us to do. And thank you, Brother Dick. The quiet one over here. I know you know it's not me. <laughs> hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. So, um, you want to say anything? I just want to, is this on? Anyway, I just want to say God is faithful. No matter what it may look like, seem like, you just keep moving forward. Never back down. God is faithful. He will always, always come through for you. We can't go by what we see, but we do know he is faithful. Amen. Amen. So, um, Jesse, do you need to run the slideshow or? They're ready to roll. Okay. Guys, we've had something in the works actually for about three years, and, um, but we didn't want to make a change until. And I, I, I think well, when we get into our own building, we'll make the change. Um, We've been looking at for some time changing the name of our church. It doesn't mean that we're not faith church. It doesn't mean we don't believe in the move of the Holy Ghost. 
That's who we are. That's our DNA. All right? I mean, I'm a classical Pentecostal boy dressed up in a charismatic suit. Okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I grew up Pentecostal holiness. I uh, went to Rama. I, I told somebody the other day, I said, I was an oddball back in 1980. A Pentecostal at Rama. That, they, you just didn't have them. And, um, but you know what? God taught me to live by faith, kept the Pentecostal roots, and now we got that blend where we can minister to people in the spirit and the word. Hallelujah. That will always be our DNA. That's who we are. Amen. But um, we just, we were looking to, um, mod, not necessarily modernize, modernize, but be able to have a focus on what we're doing. And so we have come up, like we, we got together and we came up with a new name. Hallelujah. Um, <laughs> Expedition Church of the Triad. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know that it shows up on here real good, but the tagline for our, because we wanted to keep faith and victory in it, living a life of victory forged by faith. Amen. So we are, we are on a journey. Expedition means a, a trek, a journey. Hallelujah. We're on a journey with God uh, to the end until we, until we pack it up and leave here, either in the rapture or how, you know, before then, whatever. We are on a journey. Yeah. Hallelujah. And this journey is um, focused on doing what God has for us to do on the earth, reaching the lost, Amen. getting people healed, baptizing the Holy Ghost, Amen. delivered by the power of God. Amen. Let, letting the things of God work in people's lives to make them strong, uh, faithful, fulfilled believers who can then in turn go out and reduplicate themselves and others in the world. Amen. Amen. So we're on an expedition. We're on a journey. Amen. And so I hope y'all like the name. Okay. I got one thumbs up. Okay. But some people, the other, the other name was faith and victory. I've had it. We're still, we still got faith. We still win the victory. Amen. 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 <clears throat> so, um, this was, um, not a spur of the moment decision. It's been in the can for three years. We've had the, uh, domain for three years. We've just been waiting until the right time. And, this, and so the move into our own place, um, now we're going to identify this way. And um, you will still find the fbc.org domain, but it will, once we get the other site up running, it will redirect to the other site. Hallelujah. And uh, so people who are looking for, where's that old faith and victory at? It'll still, it'll still put them over, and we'll still be able to connect. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. As for now, your cash app will still be the same domain. And you can still write your checks to Faith and Victory Church. We're simply going to do an AKA, um, also known as, okay? But the bank can't do that until March because they're in the middle of a merger. All right? So nothing's changing. I thought y'all might have some kind of <laughs> reaction beyond that. Y'all like a bunch of deer in headlights. So at Faith at Expedition Church... We're going to have base camp nursery, trailhead kids, forged youth. Okay, so base camp's going to be the nursery. They're in base camp. They're, they're just getting started. All right. All right. Then we're going to have the trailhead kids. That's going to be our children's church. They're all getting ready to go out. Then we're going to have forged youth or young adults, and they're going to, you know, they're going to be ready. We're going to launch them out into the kingdom. Praise God. And then, of course, right in here with us, us. <laughs> NBC says this is us. No, these, this, what right now is, this is us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So uh, that's a big change. I know it's a big change. The sign will be out in a couple of weeks. We had to send in the graphic tomorrow and then they got a two week turnaround to, to put it on the sign out there. And um, so lots of good things in the hopper. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, Michelle, do you mind? If we introduce you, um, this, this, prop, this, this church was started by her husband on this location. And um, now we found out in, in, in conversation, they're Pentecostal. They were Church of God. Hallelujah. That's Cleveland, Tennessee. Yep. Got, got a different shade. <laughs> Not Anderson, Indiana. Cleveland, Tennessee. Hallelujah. That's the Pentecostal ones. And, um, but they were operating as an independent um, Pentecostal charismatic type church. And... Um, 
he went home to be with the Lord, and what he wanted was this to stay at church. And God held it in reserve until we came. And so we are, we are going to be faithful to be stewards over what God ordained and planted and determined to be used for the kingdom, to use this for the kingdom and for the glory of God and to honor him. Amen. And uh, it was just this year that they put it on the market right at the time we were looking. Now, that wasn't a mistake. That was God. Because we had prayed, Lord, you got it marked out. You know where it is. You got your finger on it. It's ours. We don't know where it is, but you know where it is. Amen. And he was holding it in reserve, hallelujah, for us to come. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister Beth. Good point. No, you're quick. I was doing the same thing in prayer. God, you know who you want here. Amen. And we just asked you to bless this ministry. Yes. And you gave us a couple of words. Yep. Praise God. It was an instant. We, she was here the first time we came to look in the building. Um, we came with the realtor, and she was, she was here sitting on the back row. And... Um, the inspection, the inspection, that's right. And we came in, and, and uh, we met, and we were just like a kindred spirit, see. And uh, we, we just, we, we, fell, we fell in love with you. We think you're awesome. Hallelujah. And we love your heart. Amen. And we, we promise to be good stewards over what God did here. And listen, God anoints, and God sets aside for sacred use things. And um, I think it's a good time. Brother Hagen, uh, how many of you have ever heard of Billy Brim? Okay, Sister Billy, y'all, some, some of you may not know this. She was Brother Hagen's translator, took his messages and put them in the books. That's what she did. Um, so much so that when they did plans, purposes, and pursuits, she had stopped working for the ministry. And he, he, the, the guys who did it, he picked it up and said, I didn't say any of that. Go get Billy Brim. They rehired her just to do that book. Take his, because she, she understood his spirit, what he was trying to convey. And so she was his book transcriber, as it were. And they were doing some research on where Rama Bible Church, Rama Bible Training College is right now, and found, and found the family and found out that the grandfather of that generation, that was farmland, and there was a little knoll. Now, in Tulsa, a knoll is something paramount to a, a double-sized anthill. <laughs> it's flat out there. Okay? We went out, I remember I first went out there and turned on TV, and they said, welcome to green country. I said, you guys don't get out much. <laughs> I'm from North Carolina. This ain't green country. Now, compared to the rest of Oklahoma, it was a paradise. But anyway, <clears throat> the grandfather used to go out in, at that little knoll and pray and say, God, use this land for your glory, to reach the nations, to touch the nations. He died. And it wasn't until 1974 that when Brother Hagen, in the car with the realtor, turned onto that up there was now the uh, offices. And he said, as soon as they drove onto the ground, the Spirit of God said, this is it. This is it. And now Rama Bible Church is an acre footprint. They have over 110 acres. We have 257 Bible schools, 82 Rama Bible training centers around the world. With over 15,000 students enrolled every month, we have over 90,000 Rhema graduates preaching the gospel all over the world. And why? Because a man went out there and prayed. And God held that in reserve for his kingdom until such a time as this. And when they drove up on it and bought it, it has exploded. And I'm going to tell you, this has been held in reserve for such a time as this. And now we're about to take what God has ordained and take it to the next level. Glory to God. Listen, our plan, pay this off in three years and start building. Amen. We're not going to fill You can see it ain't going to take much to fill it up. We can put some more chairs in here, but see, it ain't going to take long to fill this up. Two services a day. We're paying this off in building. Amen. Amen. And reaching the nations for the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so uh, we, we're excited to have you. So glad you came and be, and be with us. And you are welcome anytime, all the time, whatever. You know, we'll even give you uh, uh, have somebody waiting at that door to let you in if you need to. <laughs> and she lives right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. So, I mean, there's so much, there's so much more, but um, we want to, yeah, this is, this is the, let's see here. That's the signing. Uh, that's in the lawyer's office. We ran out here and held up our little sign and, um, you know, came in 
And um, our little sign says, look, I've given you this land. Now go in and take it. It is the land God promised to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and, and Jacob, and their children after them. Deuteronomy 1, 6 through 8 through the Message Bible. And then it says, entering our land, January 28, 2022. That's when we signed the papers. Hallelujah. And the devil didn't get in on messing that up either. He tried, but he didn't. Hallelujah. Praise God. We have a little care package. Well, that's not a care package. It's a goodie bag. You got a refrigerator magnet. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, and some of y'all, y'all, most of y'all know Tim Honeycutt. I walked in, uh, actually I looked online <clears throat> at the pictures. I said, Tim Honeycutt hung those speakers. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know his work. How do you know his work? I worked for him on the side doing sp installs. I did those kind of array more than once. <laughs> I knew exactly when I saw it, whose it was. I told my wife, I said, that's a Tim Honeycutt install. And so we asked Sister Ms. Thorne, and um, she said, well, what was his name? I said, Tim Honeycutt. She said, that's the guy. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. So um, praise the Lord. Invite people. You can now tell them where we are. If you don't know the address, find out. 6302 Walter Wright Road. I didn't know this. This used to be what? Nazarene Church Road. Okay? And they changed the name. Praise the Lord. Everybody get one? We miss anybody? All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Honey, what do you think? You got anything else to say? Okay. She doesn't like to talk in front of, in front, in front of uh, adults. She loves the kids. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, so at this time, it's time to receive our, in the, this building for the very first time, our Sunday morning tithe and offering. Hallelujah. If you're, if you're sending through uh, Cash App or PayPal, you can go ahead and do that electronically. If you need an offering envelope, Brother Joe's back there with that. Hallelujah. Uh, write your checks to FVC.org. I mean, FVC.org. FVC. <laughs> That's the website. Um, if you are giving for the very first time ever and are not giving a check, please write in English. <laughs> Unless we have a moment like in the Old Testament where, where he had to read the handwriting on the wall, uh, we need to know what your name and address is. Okay? Um, I don't know there's a biblical base, basis for the uh, interpretation of tongues that are handwritten. <laughs> All right? Hallelujah. Praise God. Anybody else? Anyone? All right. What did Jesus say? And it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give it to your bosom. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And we thank God that, you know, um, the prophet Malachi said, bring all the tithe and offering into the storehouse and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I do not open unto you the windows of heaven. Now, the key James says, pour you out. The literal Hebrew says, empty out upon you. Blessings you will not have room enough to receive. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the tithers and the givers. We thank you that you open heaven's windows and you pour out blessings. You said in your word that you, have, you give us the power to get wealth, that we may establish your covenant in the earth. I thank you, Father, that all the finances necessary to fund and propagate the gospel throughout the earth flow into this place as we take our part and our purpose, and we run with it in the kingdom of God. We thank you the people are blessed in accordance with your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe. Receive that. Hallelujah. And Brother Joe, you're going to add some ushers to your list now. I can tell you it's so much nicer to have a smaller room with people together and what we mean in that church that, that was really big and everybody was all, you know, you were like looking for where they were. I mean, Brother Bill was so far back that you couldn't even hear him say amen. <laughs> if you can't hear Brother Bill say amen. <clears throat> I mean, he, need, he, he needed a microphone just to say be the amen corner. All right, children's church, you're dismissed with, with my wife, Miss Janie. Hallelujah. Down the hallway, last room on the left. Glory to God. The rest of you, go ahead and open your Bibles, if you will. 
to the second book of Timothy in the second chapter. Timothy chapter 2. Paul writing to his protege, his young minister, um, pastor, that he had mentored and trained, said, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. <clears throat> thou therefore endure hardness. Now, I just lost half the charismatic world, particularly the word of faith bunch. Hello. See, we don't, we don't think, and, you know, and we've had to deal with this for some time. We don't think in our circles that we're ever going to deal with anything. Well, Brother Hagin said you're just going to have what you say. You're not going to have it. Now, he didn't ever say that. I already said this more than once. Some folks think they're going through life on flowery beds of ease, never having any trouble. That all the blessings of God are going to fall off the, onto them like ripe cherries off a tree. And then he would turn around and say this, and nothing could be further from the truth. Amen. So you hear one little sermon, you can have what you say, and you run off and you think, oh, praise God, I'm just going to say it one time, and I got, it doesn't work that way. There's no, you don't find that in the Bible anywhere. That's not, that's not the pattern of the Word of God. There's, there's a thing called faithfulness. Amen? And faithfulness, well, I got faith. And the journey of faith is faithfulness. Amen. Hello? I said the journey of faith is faithfulness. The expedition of faith is faithfulness. You've got to be steadfast. You've got to be able to withstand the storms. That's why I told, told Timothy, he said, endure so uh, hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, he, yet he is not crowned except he strives lawfully. Now, when we hear, and this is one of the things that we, we got to be careful about, and, and I think we just did a bad job in it in the, in the early years of our Word of Faith charismatic, you know, uh, era, because well, we, we saw Pentecostals. And see, Pentecostals knew how to have a move of God. Amen. We'd stay at the altar until God did something. I'm telling you. I mean, we just, we just absolutely, you know, wouldn't let go. Now, a lot of times, we didn't know the first thing about saying the right thing. I mean, I, 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 mean, I, I, was, I grew up in a cost I know. I, I've, I've argued with people all day long in church. You know, after I got, got a hold of the word, you know, I'm suffering like Paul. I, I, I got, I'm, suffering, I'm suffering like Job, and I got Paul's thorn. And, and I'm like the man born blind. They were all three in one. I'm like, come on. Pick or choose at least one and just kind of narrow it. No, they were doing it all. They had Paul's thorn. They were like the man born blind. Hello. And they are suffering like Job. You think, dear Lord. And, and, and they, never, they never could get healed. They could never get blessed. And you wonder why. Well, you got to learn. You know, we did learn. You got to watch. You got to put a guard over your mouth. Put a watch over my mouth that I may not sin against thee. But then we took faith. And we turned it into a commodity of Hungry Jack instant potatoes. If you take the water, the real, the butter, you heat it up to the right temperature, you know, and then dump in those powdery things and stir it up, you got instant potatoes. Well, somebody cooked them taters and then dehydrated them into powder before you ever got to that in. Hello. Are you here? You're going home. We, we, got, we got this idea, and, and we lost in that process the understanding of being faithful to what God told you to do. You have, we have to understand that the role of faithfulness, and I'm going to tell you something. There are so many times, um, when I first got saved, I was a crazy man for Jesus. I got stop signs turned into go signs. When I got through witnessing to the stop sign, it was green. You understand? I mean, I was just a nut for Jesus. I still am, 
But I was so I had all this zeal, and God had shown me things, and you know, and uh, and and I. But I expected them next week. I remember when the Lord, the Lord told me right after I got born again, I would go to the Orient and preach. I'm ordering luggage because I'm leaving next week. <laughs> Do you know it's 25 years? 20, 20 years. God spoke to me in, in 1979. I would go to the Orient and preach, and it was February of 1999 when I stepped off the plane onto the tarmac in Bangkok, Thailand. It didn't happen overnight. Are you here? And we, we look at things and we judge them based on what we see other people do. Well, they that compare, uh, compare themselves among themselves are what? Not wise. You're in ministry or you're doing something for God or, you know, even people look at us and go, well, if, I wonder why, uh, I mean, Ed Taylor's been here for this number of years and this hadn't happened and this church has come in. Look at them. You can't do that. You can't compare something to something else. Are you here? Amen. Now, here's the problem. Because of our mindset about what God will do in the timetables, we, we lost the understanding of faithfulness and people would quit. I had friends tell me, if I were you, I'd quit. I'd move somewhere else. Good friends, minister friends. If I had gone through what you've gone through, I would have quit gone somewhere else. Yeah, but God didn't tell me to quit. God didn't tell me I could go somewhere else. God didn't tell me. What did he tell me? I, I, I always go back to the last thing he told you. That you know he spoke. And the last thing I know, I was sharing this with somebody the other day. In 1987, in February, and some of you don't know this, we took this church from a church where the pastor had passed away. And um, Buddy Harrison called me, Brother Hagin's son-in-law. We were ordained with him at the time. And um, said, I need for you to be ready to go to Greensboro and fill in for this pastor. We haven't been told, so we're trying to minister to him and get him healed. And uh, we need somebody on standby to be able to go and, and minister. Well, I'm praying. And in prayer, because uh, I'm getting ready, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a part-time, well, I'm a full-time chicken cooker at the restaurant. A volunteer staff member at the church. Not even on staff full-time. And... Um, and actually, I went on staff a month later, full time. Just, you know, just, but at, right at that point, I was still cooking chickens. I can still cook mean chicken. <laughs> Give me a deep fryer and cottonseed oil, and we'll make, you, we'll, we'll make your tongue sing. Hallelujah. And uh, in prayer, now, unless you've got to understand, this is 1987. I'm a young guy. I mean, I've been out of Rainbow six years almost. So I'm 27, 28. I'm still young. And the Lord spoke and said, that pastor will come home and you'll take that church. Now, he didn't stay in Tulsa. I didn't have to go preach. I forgot. it. Now, number one, I thought I was being arrogant. I didn't even, I didn't go, yes, Lord, I received that. I was like, get me behind me, Satan. I don't know. But you see, the Lord knows beginning from the end. I mean, it, it, not that it was his will. He just knows what's going to happen. Okay? And uh, they couldn't turn that because he, he um, there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reasons he couldn't get that turned around. And um, May, he passed away, went home to be with Jesus. We came and became, uh, we started coming every weekend as like an interim pastor. In August, they finally called and said, what are you going to do about that church? I said, well, I've known since February. I'm supposed to take it. But I was walking this out because, I mean, that's one of those things you start getting on fear and trembling on ground. Now, the last thing the Lord told me was I was coming to Greensboro to pastor. And you know what? Concerning where I, where I go and, 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 the, and the center focus of ministry, he hadn't said anything else since. He ain't told me I could quit, hadn't told me to leave, hadn't told me I'm going somewhere else. He told me I was coming here. So what are you going to do? Because people ask you, well, I mean, you've been there all those years and nothing, this hadn't happened and that hadn't happened. I mean, you guys are nomads. You don't even have your own building. I mean, you're, you're leasing, you're renting. Now you don't even have that. You're just borrowing a church on Sunday afternoons. But you see, you've got to be faithful to what God said, even when it doesn't make sense Amen. to anybody else around you. Amen. And if you can't do that, you will not enter into the land. 
you won't get the goods. Now, I can tell you, what's ahead of us as a church is far beyond what any of y'all have been dreaming about. It's, it's a coming. I said, it's a coming. Hallelujah. And, I, I, and I, I'm going to tell you. Now, listen, when we were in the business park all those years, we had some great services. I guarantee you go over there, you can still sense the residual of the Holy Ghost. Because we had some moves of the Spirit of God, but it wasn't home. And we, we, we worked with that the best. And it was great. And we had, I'm telling you, we had some mm, glory to God. I mean, we had services. We had about, never had to stack them on top of each other. They were all out in the spirit. They were laid out all over the place, all over the chairs, all over the floor, all up on the platform. I mean, you know, they were everywhere. And we've had those kind of services. We've had them running. We've run the aisles, run out the back door, and come in the other back door. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll, I'll never forget. Um, now, do you remember Ray Hughes? Okay. Uh, Dr. Ray Hughes, when I was first born again back in the uh, 79, he was the guest speaker or the, the keynote speaker at the Falcon Children's Home, Falcon Camp Meeting down in the uh, Dunn area in North Carolina and um, <clears throat> for the Pentecostal Holiness Church. So the Church of God overseer came. He was a general overseer for the Church of God. And he was a, a man could preach. Lord, that man could preach. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I like that. That's, that's my kind of anointing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he was he's just preaching. I mean, his face is red. He got, you know, you had to do it with a microphone back then. Microphone with the uh, cable tied into your belt. <laughs> How does it wouldn't snatch it out of your hand? You know, and uh, he's, and all of a sudden the power of God hit that building. And it came, I remember what he said. He said, this is a divine intervention. And it just went crazy. You see, and God we're, we're, we're headed into divine intervention in a lot of things. Amen. The direction you thought we may have been going in, the things of God. This, this building we are dedicating to the glory of God, Amen. the freedom of the Spirit to manifest and to work, to see people healed. Um, we are not going to have Sunday night services except at this point we're looking at once a quarter having a healing and miracle rally. Where we bring the sick in and people who need miracles. We're going to pray for the sick. We're going to cast out devils. I mean, we're going to get miracles, praise God. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you just need to cast out devils so you can get them healed. Amen. Amen. You know, there are demon spirits of affliction. Hello. Amen. And sometimes people aren't sick physically. They've got a demon spirit on them. That, that's got to be dealt with. <coughs> and you can't go around praying, Lord, if it be thy will, heal them. It is his will. Yes. Amen. And so faithfulness to the call. We are called to, you know, the Lord asked me, because when this opportunity came here, the Lord asked me, because I, I went to the Lord and said, Lord, it's always been what I, I've always been saying for 20, 25 years. We were going to move over to the central part of the, of the triad out on the 68 corridor. And then this property became available. I'm thinking, well, that's out in Pleasant Garden. Do you know how far out there that is? <laughs> it's way away from where I thought we were headed. But you remember Paul was on, and, and, uh, was on his way to preach in one place. It was forbidden by the Spirit to go. And then saw in a dream a man saying, come over unto us. And he got over there and preached and got whipped and thrown in jail. <laughs> Can't you imagine the conversation in the jail that night? I told you not to get them pepperonis on that pizza. Because that was a pizza dream you had getting us over here. We done been whooped and thrown in jail. No, the Bible says that at midnight they prayed and sang praises. And the prisoners heard them. Amen. See, he was, on, he was on a path he thought he was supposed to go here. And God directed over that. Now listen, that Ephesians jailer, church history tells us that when that Ephesians jailer came in, he was going to kill himself, and Paul stopped him, told him not to do it, we're here, that he became the pastor of that local church. That Ephesians jailer. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. And Ephesus became a focal point of the church because of its crossroads position and propagating and sharing the gospel throughout the, that area. Hallelujah. Because God directed where he thought he was going to a place he chose out. Amen. And we, we, we had said, 
I'm not going to go up that 68 corridor. And, you know, so we've centrally located in the triad. And, and I know there's people here going, uh, location-wise, that would have been really great, Pastor. <laughs> but the Lord asked me, because I was thinking, saying, Pleasant Garden. He said, how many churches are over there? Big churches. Well, church on 68, that's big. Triad Church, that's big. Summit Church has gone out on Oak Ridge, it's big. Right over on the county line is uh, Crossroads Church, they're big. He said, how many more churches can you put there and not saturate it? He said, then he asked me this question. Who's going to take care of the people over here? Who's going to reach them? Hallelujah. I said, I'll go. I said, I'll go. You know, it didn't took, it took about that long. <laughs> I, I learned from Dad Hagen. Hallelujah. You know, Brother Hagen was doing something he had done. Um, he had, left, he had left his last pastorate and gone back into field ministry, and it weren't working. They were be, I mean, they were, they were about to starve. And he went to the Lord in prayer and said, Lord, now, you, uh, I was in my last pastorate. I had plenty of money. My family was fed. I was comfortable. I was enjoying life. And then you told me to go on the road. Now I'm out here about to starve. My family don't hardly have any money. You know, and um, he said, I obeyed you. I did what you told me to do. And the Lord spoke to him and said, yeah, you did, but you weren't willing to do it. He said, my word says, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. He said, I just looked right down on the inside and made an adjustment. He said, now, Lord, I'm willing. <laughs> I'm willing. And I expect to eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. And see, you can learn by what others have gone through, or you can be hard-headed and learn it the hard way. And, I, and I, I said, the Lord said, who'll take care of my people over there? I, I'm willing. Here we go. I know for some of you it's a little bit further drive. Um, but, I mean, the property we were looking at before this was two minutes from my house. But they want the place. And we walk, when we walked in the door, there was no more questions. This was the right place. Actually, really, before that, I was looking at it on the internet. I could, I was so excited just looking at it before I could even get in the building. I'm like, this is the place. This is the place. This is the place. But it's out in Pleasant Garden. If this is the place, this is the place. And just, you know, it's only 4.3 miles from L. Eugene 85 exit. 4.3. Hallelujah. It's three miles from 62. So we're, we're, we're not. And everything out here is getting ready to go, go crazy growing. Yeah, because the mega thing coming, all this stuff coming out here, this is getting ready to go. But we prayed out over the past few months, Lord, we have to have a place to launch what you called us to do in the world. We have to have a place. And we know you got us a place. We know you got us a place. And so here we are today. And we, we, have this, we have this place, but this place is only um, the beginning. So we're not going to throw our hands up and go, well, we did it. We got us a church. Praise God. Now we can kick back. Baby, you better go get your running shoes on because we're taking off. Hallelujah. You think you, you ain't seen busy yet. I said, you haven't seen busy yet. Glory to God. In this... You, you people have been so faithful to stay and to pray and support through all this, even when, you know, others left and others said things. We, we, I mean, we have people leave the church and then see people out there in the public and go, I'm going to tell you one thing. That is Taylor. Da, 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 da. And you just, oh, well. God loves me. You may not, but God does. <laughs> and my wife and kids do. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm loved. And I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. I am blessed. I'm sorry. We love you, Pastor. All right. Thank you, Brother Bill. We have such a purpose and a call to take the nations. In 1988, I had that vision. We call it the 88 vision, where I was praying 
and looked up and saw dark clouds over the Piedmont Triad. And, uh, and instantly I went up in the spirit and was at those clouds. And now let me tell you something. This whole thing took place in about 30 seconds. See, spiritual things can happen so fast that it takes you 10 minutes to describe them. And um, we were in that metal warehouse down on Lee Street. And m most of you weren't in there. Jesse was in there. My other two kids weren't even born. She, she was a year. And we were, um, and I went up and saw these, these, this cloud. When I got up there, it was demon spirits. And they were all hooked arm in arm together and covering this whole area. And as I was there, a shaft of light came up and went through the, that, that cloud. And the Lord said, that's the prayers of the saints. And, and then I was back down the earth looking, and, and as, as I did, feet started coming down through the cloud. And as it did, the clouds rolled back, and it was Jesus. And he came, and he stood on the earth. And he reached down, and he picked up the Piedmont Triad. Now, let me just say, add a little bit of uh, another history here is, how many of you ever heard of the Moravians? On their way to America, when they came to settle this area, they had a vision of three bright lights being used for the kingdom of God. And it's the Piedmont Triad, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, High Point. Moravians had visions. God will talk to anybody that will listen. Well, we Pentecostals, no, you don't got it all. Thank God for what we do have, but we 